So word on the street is JAFX is getting sued. If you don't know, it's a Forex broker. One of the best ones in my opinion that trade crypto. They getting sued, man. Let's talk about this right after the intro. Roll it. What's up, y'all? This your boy, Jay Wayne, you know, representing Team Take Profits. And I got my boy, Curtis Cobain, with me. And, um, oh, no. and uh, we just wanted to talk about this JAFX thing being sued um, by the uh, CFTC. And uh, the thing of it is, the word on the street is that that they ex they accepting you as brokers, and they've been doing it since maybe uh, 2013. Is it 13? 2013? And so, um... Uh, the thing of it is, is that I first started trading Traders Way, and, and that's a whole other video, all right? But I ditched them and joined with uh, JAFX, and I fell in love with them, man. Like, I love them. I love their uh, spreads. I love, um, and I use them as ECN, and I love um, the swap fees. Like, everything is just reasonable, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and then the fact that they traded crypto was even better, and um, you know what I'm saying? So, everything was going good, um, and then, then this happened. You know what I'm saying? So the thing of it is, is that everybody is worrying. Uh, how does it affect them? Are they going? Is my funds going to get tied up in in my uh, broke in their broker account? Um, you know, is JFX when they try to withdraw it? Is it are they going to hold it? And you know, honestly, man, I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? I, I, don't, I don't. In my opinion, I, Curtis is going to share his opinion on it, but I don't think that the funds is going to get held. I mean, if you try to withdraw it, um, especially now. Uh, my, the reason why I think that is because if the eyes are on them, then they definitely not going to be cutting up. If, if they were cutting up, they definitely not going to be cutting up now, right? Because the, uh, the CFTC is trying to be for us U.S. Um, customers. I think, you know, maybe. But, so, you know, they're not going, JFX is not going to be doing nothing crazy, especially holding up our funds. Um, you know, I can't, I don't know you know, six months, a year from now, deep into this situation that they're going through. But for right now, I mean, we good. So what I did was I, I, I still have JFX, but I opened up another broker um, and just, just to diversify my accounts. Yeah, you know? absolutely. It's, it's nothing wrong with having, you know, multiple brokers. You always want to kind of diversify just to have a, you know, a backup plan in case something does go wrong. Like when same thing happened with Traders Way, they had issues with liquidity providers. People were, you know, wigging out like it was Traders Way's fault. But all Traders Way can do is continuously find liquidity providers. They're just the middleman so that we can have a, a medium to exchange our funds, so, you know, within that market. So the thing with, you know, JAFX right now is they were accepting U.S. customers and it ran into a situation where the CFTC was like, hey, you're not regulated in the U.S., you're not allowed to take these customers. And they are very strict about, you know, anybody outside of America accepting U.S. dollars, you know, in the country. So basically, long story short, they're trying to basically come to them and say, hey, you owe us this amount of money for a fine, basically, for accepting U.S. customers. We went to your site, you know, the U.S. is top on the list, so you're targeting U.S. customers. And they're like, well, we're not targeting anything. We just yeah. listed it that way, you know, because we listed the top markets at the very top of our list. So U.S. happened to be at the top. But... JAFX honestly hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah. It's just the U.S. has, you know, finally noticed that they've been doing business in the U.S. And that's all. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, they JFX is saying that hey, it takes a it takes a long time to be you know regulated, you know, the paperwork. But here's the here's the thing. Then the CT the CFTC comes back and say, well, we don't have any paperwork saying that you even register try to even register with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, what, what could be the possible problem? That we run into. Well, worst case scenario <laughs> is, you know, we all got to end up withdrawing our money out of uh, J JFX. And then from there, we run into a situation where we're going to have to find new brokers. And then this is where we run into an issue because at the moment right now, Trump has all these different stipulations with trading and the different embargoes all, all across the world with, you know, involving U.S. So we're going to have issues trying to use anything outside of the U.S. right now with banks, with banks involved. Mm. So most people are going to have a situation where if you live in the U.S., you can run into a whole lot of hurdles trying to find a broker that has a, a high amount of leverage. Mm. Because the laws in the U.S. states that the highest leverage they can offer here is 1 to 50. 1 to 50 is Bro. minimal. So let's say, example, say if you have an account with about $10,000, the largest amount of lots you could have would be about $10 worth, a standard. And not just saying, oh, you can take multiple standards. I mean, you could have multiple entries equaling up to a standard. 
if you had something like a thousand dollars the highest slice you could take would probably be a dollar per pill and, and, and that might be good for some folks <laughs> right right that'll definitely put the discipline in place like okay look, I, all i can do is this so but yeah but us using these overseas brokers starting off with like you know traders way and then going from you know maybe fx choice and then something like jfx it spoils us because we're used to having that high leverage and being able to multiply our money in a very fast rate but something like Orlando or Toro, the American brokers, it pulls you way back down to earth. And America basically has this rule where it takes money to make money. So the more money you initially have is the larger your position, the more money you can make, the faster you can compound. So it'll be a slow growth process if we all have to switch to American brokers and we, we kind of just got to adjust to it. Or we'll find one of these overseas brokers that's allowed to be in the U.S. And then from there, we can kind of do our thing. But at the moment, it's going to be a bit of a struggle because even now I'm looking for brokers and it's like, geez, a piece, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, guys, if you do want to switch your broker, you have JFX, but you just want another one, um, in the uh, description below, I have the, um, a link to the, the broker that I use, which is LQ, uh, LQDFX. And uh, you can click on that and open up a, a live account, demo account, whatever you want to do. So, check out the, um, the description below. Um, definitely diversify your accounts just like how we do crypto. My man is a crypto king. Hey, where can they follow you at on crypto? Uh, you can follow me on Facebook at Curtis Cobain Branch or on uh, Instagram at Life of Kurt. You know, just all like one word, Life of Kurt. And I mean, honestly, guys, like for me, when I tell people even now, like if you wanted to even fund your JAFX account, which would be a little risky considering what's going on with them, you know, going through the regulatory stuff. But any broker you have overseas where it runs into an issue with trying to use a bank, you can always use crypto at the moment right now because most brokers that do accept crypto, it's no fees, it's instant, you don't have to worry about your money taking seven days to land in a bank account. Cryptocurrency is the most faster way to move the funds around. But we want to stay compliant on every level. So you have to make sure that no matter what you do inside of this space, you're dealing with a broker that usually is regulated. So that way you don't have to deal with these kind of issues moving forward. And it keeps them from doing anything illegal because now they have to answer to an actual regulatory official. Now, my deal with the regulatory stuff is going to be real quick. I just want to make sure y'all understand it's the good and the bad to all of this. Yeah. Regulations never stop anything from happening, okay? Regulation is always a reaction kind of thing. So they've never stopped anything previously or beforehand. It's always somebody gets ripped off and then they come in and try to change the law. So at the moment, like I said, JAFX hasn't technically done anything wrong. They're just taking U.S. customers and that's considered illegal by you know CFTC standards. They haven't you know scammed anybody, haven't taken anybody's money. Only thing JAFX has done is they moved their banks from the original bank they had, they moved to Poland. So a lot of banks don't like doing you know transactions with Poland banks because well, a lot of scams happen in Poland. Mm -hmm. So that kind of like threw up a lot of red flags. That's one of the reasons why they actually got noticed by the U.S. because of the Poland bank move that they did. So it's a lot. It's like a whole song and dance right now. Yeah. It's like a, it's, a, it's a constellation of things that are happening at one time. And we just want to make sure you guys have a, a lot of information so you can understand what to do next. So best case scenario, find another broker, something that's, you know, a regulated broker or something that's, you know, going to be a little bit better for you to move your money around in. And then from that standpoint, we just got to stay on our P's and Q's with JAFX. They're a great broker in my opinion as well. I haven't had any issues with them. I love the fact that they list crypto. They have, you know, options with the, you know, the different indices that they have on there and everything you have with Forex and the exotic. So, in my opinion, amazing broker. And awesome. customer service is amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's, it's crazy to see it kind of like, you know, get in the news with this bad rap, but it, when you're dealing with money and banks, it's it's a real fine line you gotta walk. And yeah. being a trader right now in this space, especially at this time, with the president that we have, it's it's rough. It's like the gift and the curse. Like the market's are volatile, but now we gotta deal with a lot of issues with the banks moving our money around. So you gotta be a little optimistic and you gotta be a little precautious at the same time. So. For me to you, just get another broker, have it on the, on the side, and that way you can kind of be be ready. If something does happen, you'll be able to just shift gears and not have to have that huge hiccup of waiting for things to get verified and stuff of that nature. Hey, man. All I know is, man, I'm just trying to get rich, and they need to quit cock blocking on this, on this wealth, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey. Hey, y'all, I hope this video was informative. Anything that happens, we definitely will be uh, bringing you another video, uh, keeping you updated on this situation. And my mission is to help as many people as I can become six-figure traders so then you can empower the people around you. So, hey, don't forget to like this video. Follow my man's Kurt on... Curtis Cobain Branch on Facebook and Life of Kurt on Instagram. There you go. And comment and subscribe. And let's make this money, baby. Peace. Get it.